All right, welcome back. Final stage of the um, tour down under. Now I'm a little, had to skip a day. Um, not skip a day of painting. Well, I don't want to say this. <laughs> Maybe before I started this discussion, I should have figured out exactly how I wanted to say what I wanted to say. But um, what I'm trying to say is saying, what I'm trying to say, is that um, the final stage was raced on Sunday. Today is Monday, but it was raced on Sunday in Australian time, which is 16 hours ahead of Virginia time. So, see how confusing I can make this. So I didn't, because Sundays I usually get the pleasure of my wife and I get to watch our lovely granddaughter, Alistair. So I can't really sit up here and paint the bike race all day while she's here. Nor would I want to. She's a lot of fun to hang out with. So um, where was I going with that? So I've got to the um, race today. So this is Monday painting the race that happened, oh, what, 36 hours ago? Sounds about right. Plus, then, I not only did I have to, not have to, get to um, hang out with my granddaughter and keep her entertained, I also then had to go to work as well. I still, you know, while I do rather well as an artist, I still um, continue to bartend because it's a maximum return for minimum time and less things to worry about. So anyway, so this is the final stage. I'm painting it a good, um, like I say, 36 hours behind real time. But it's still, I consider it painting live because I'm still, um, I have no idea how this race is going to come out. I have my guesses how it will go, but um, I don't know for sure. I'll call this the next to try. I believe this is Max, uh, Maximilian or Max Schachmann. Writing for Bora Hansgrove. I've always liked this particular rider. And back when Sagan raced on his team, uh, I think it was the Giro, he went out and got the first yellow jersey because he, everybody thought he was just going off the front to lead out. Um, Peter Sagan, his teammate, and they kind of let him go because they figured, well, we'll just go and Sagan chases him, and he ended up stealing the first, that must have been the tour, stealing the first yellow jersey of the tour because everybody thought, oh, well, that's not what this move is. So there's all sorts of race strategies, and, you know, for all we know, Although it's still, oh, well, it's only 20 kilometers. It's a bit of a far go on a stage that ends on the top of a um, climb. But he's a pretty good climber as well as a decent sprinter. So maybe he can do it. But so he's giving it a shot, but he's off the front by, you know, mere seconds. Looking back to see, probably to see, one, did he get away? And two, is anybody coming with him? Because it would be even, he'd have a better chance if somebody joined him in the effort. Still kind of trying to figure out how to paint this jersey. That's one of the things about painting the um, this particular race, the Tour Down Under, is it's the first time, the first look at new kits by various teams. Um... So it takes me a little bit during the course of this race to um, figure out how to best 
paint the particular jerseys. Um, so far, the only real fail for me and not for my painting of it, but I'm just really underwhelmed with Rubama FTJ's jersey. They've always had a great combinations of reds and blue and white, bleu blanc et rouge, the colors of the French flag, and now it's just all dark blue. And this year's Pro Tour Peloton seems to have a lot of dark blue in it. You know, some years it's red, some years it's black, and this year it's dark blue. So, this was turned out though. <laughs> this is going to be another simple image, which is, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, and, you know, when it's alone, sorry, I've got the brush in my mouth again. When it's alone, wider, the, um, it's a little harder to make it dynamic so that's where your composition comes in so you're looking at this image with this nice space over here where if, if it was like this it was a vertical not anywhere near as interesting so you're sort of getting the sense by this composition that he really does have a gap that he is alone by virtue of looking over his shoulder and the direction of his shoulder is empty road. So again, the composition, how you put the painting together while off times is intuitive. You, you know, that intuition comes from practice. You know, I started painting with the Tour de France, about halfway through the Tour de France in 2012. I don't know if I've told you all this story, so I'm sitting there watching the tour. <coughs> and you may have guessed I'm a bit of a workaholic. And so I'm watching the tour and it just, I'm not one of these people that will sit and watch TV. Certainly not during the middle of the day, which was the case, you know, I'm watching the tour live, so it's, early morning to midday. And I was just like, this is killing me. I can't sit here and watch TV. You know, I need to be working. I need to be doing something. And my wife, Bridget, the actor Bridget Gethins, who is the smartest person I know and infinitely smarter than me, um, said, well, why don't you paint the race, do these little watercolors, and then um, at that point, I was still on Facebook, unaware of Twitter and certainly Instagram. Sorry, I lost my image on the screen. TV times out. And she said, well, so post them on Facebook and see if you can sell them. So as I like to say, only because I like to say it because it's true, proof that all of my good ideas are hers. And it just turned out to be this great thing. And it's, you know, I really enjoy doing it. I get to watch the races. I don't have to feel guilty about just sitting watching races. It is a bit of a double-edged sword, particularly for her, because this does take a lot of time. But fortunately, it has become a decent revenue stream, mainly with the Tour de France. Of course, that's where every, you know people who never watch cycling watch the Tour de France. I was actually talking with a couple of older women at the restaurant where I bartend last night. and They said a comment I hear a lot of times, oh, I watch the Tour de France all the time because I love looking at all the scenes of France. And I think the broadcasts capitalize on that and so make a point to show the beautiful scenery of France. And you also like the um, 
tore down under this broadcast, not only, you know, are we seeing all of the beauty and the sort of combination of urban and rural and all of that of this South Australia out around Adelaide and the Adelaide Hills and the wine country. But then they run these ads during the course of the broadcast. So knowing full well that people are going to watch and go, I'd love to go there. And here, go to these great spots when you come. <laughs> now, I've always wondered, it's like, do the cyclists get a chance to enjoy the beauty of where they're riding? And I know when I ride in a group ride, I actually had one guy yell at me one time because we were in a pretty tight pace line and Actually, what happened was a bee went down my throat. <laughs> I kind of swerved and he got all mad. It was like, well, you know, I swallowed a bee, buddy. <laughs> Back off. This isn't the Peloton. But that's one of the things in a group ride. You do need to be cognizant of, aware of. And, you know, there are, you, know, you start to ride with the same group a lot. I ride with RABA, Richmond Area Bicycle Association, and there are some riders that you just know you don't want to be behind because, yeah, not the best at riding a clean line in the peloton, in a pace line. So, anyway. So this is the painting of Shockman looking over his shoulder as he escapes the grip of the peloton for a hot second. The way the peloton, they've never let a break go all day today. And, of course, I should mention that you can see all of the work on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. It'll be in the comment area as well. And also, there are links there for each of the blog posts to take you to the specific painting, like this blog that will be called The Next to Try. Then there'll be a link straight over to my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase the place. Now, this is the last video of this race. So the next I'll be going back to showing the painting that I was working on in my studio when this race started. But if you subscribe, give yourself an alert button, you'll know when I post the next things. The next race I plan to paint isn't until the end of February. The Unlop het Neusblan as we move into the spring classics, starting with the Belgian classics and the cobbled, they like to call them the cobbled classics. So Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Would love your thumbs up. Would love a feedback. What you think. And uh, we'll see you, I don't know, probably about a week or so. Thanks.